Hello, fellow detectives. Welcome to Unlocked, the official podcast for all things Nancy Drew from Her Interactive. I'm your host, Tammy Tucky, and this week we welcome NASA rocket scientist Kristen Boomer to the show. Welcome, Kristen. Thanks so much for having me, Tammy. It really is a pleasure to have you on the show. And, and what was your first initial interest in the Nancy Drew games? You know, how did you find them in, in the beginning? So when I was about nine, uh, I got all of my mom's old Nancy Drew books. She owned almost all of the original 56 and the few she didn't have, I quickly picked up at the bookstore. I loved reading, loved the books. Uh, I also had the 1970s TV series on VHS. Um, then one year, my mom got me Message in a Haunted Mansion and Treasure in the Royal Tower for Christmas. So I started playing both games at the same time, kind of going back and forth between the two. Uh, after a while, I got pretty stuck in both of them. Uh, just pretty much was just wandering around. I think we're all pretty familiar with that feeling. Um, and so I kind of gave up a little bit. Um, but a couple months later, uh, I was at a friend's house and she pulled out Secrets Can Kill. And, uh, I was like, oh yeah, I have some of these games too. So my friend and I, and another one of our friends, we started playing all three games kind of simultaneously actually until we solved all of them. And then I think there were only about five games out at the time. Uh, so I picked up Stay Tuned for Danger and Final Scene and played those. And then from there on out, as the games came out, I played everyone since then. <laughs> the internet was such a wonderful gateway to get involved with the community. So you you found some other fans through the message boards, the Her Interactive message boards. Yeah, I think uh, the first my first uh, interaction with the message boards was I really just could not figure out how to solve Secrets Can Kill. Uh, so I just kept searching the threads uh, until I could you know, get enough hints that uh, I could finally make it to the end there. <laughs> so, so Nancy Drew must have inspired you as a role model to, you know, move forward with your educational career, correct? I guess sort of. Uh, I was pretty set on going into like a, a science and engineering field from an early age. Um, but one thing I always thought was cool about the games, um, they're very educational, obviously. And so sometimes you learn things in the games and then you later learn them in school and you think, wow, that's pretty awesome. Like, I already knew that because I learned that in the game. What What made you become interested in, in the science field overall and, and, and really drew you to become a rocket scientist? So, like I said, I was interested in the space program from a very young age. Uh, when I was four years old, uh, I kind of had two career choices in mind. And that was either I wanted to be an astronaut or I wanted to be an artist. And I actually kind of always laugh when I think about the artist option now, because I'm actually probably the worst freehand drawer you'll ever beat in your life. So it very became shortly clear that uh, that option was out. So probably around late elementary to middle school was when I realized, hey, realistically, there's only a few people that get to be astronauts. And even if you do become an astronaut, you have to do something else before you can get to that point. So... And I don't know, this part sounds kind of lame, I think, but uh, we took this career test in home ec class in eighth grade, and the top choice that came up for, you know, top match that came up for mine was aerospace engineer. And then I started looking more into this because we had to do a report on it, and I actually thought to myself, wow, this sounds really cool. So that was kind of the, the point where I decided I wanted to go into engineering. So I, um, before I became a full-time NASA employee, I had the opportunity to do um, some internships. So my first internship was actually between my junior and senior year of high school. And then I did internships um, three summers after that. Um, and then I got into something called NASA's Cooperative Education Program, uh, which is co-op for short. And the difference between an internship and a co-op is that an internship is a shorter period of time, uh, usually like 10 weeks maybe, let's say, uh, during the summer. Um, and that's really your first taste of actually working in the engineering field, um, seeing what engineering work will be like. Um, right up to this point, you've maybe just seen, you've seen all the classes and stuff, but you don't actually know how to apply it. So then a co-op, it's actually an agreement that employers have with universities. And it's for a longer period of time. And you alternate going to class and going 
to work. So, for example, one semester I might take classes and then the next semester I'll go work somewhere and continue that into the summer. So it's more like six to eight months. So you get really a longer period of time to get working on something. You're more involved in the project and you really learn a lot about um, what it's actually like being an engineer. So I was in the co-op program and then after I graduated, I was hired full time. Well, can you take us through the average day in the life of yourself, you know, at NASA? So it actually kind of varies. Um, I am actually, I'm an electrical engineer. Um, so some days in the lab, uh, I test hardware. Um, or some days I might be at my desk. I answer emails, I write reports, I analyze things. Um, some days it might be a combination of those kind of things. Uh, also, meetings are sometimes uh, part of your day because when you're working on uh, projects, you work with a lot of people, and collaboration and communication is also a very big part of the job. Um, so you have to make sure that everyone's on the same page to get the job done. Um, you have to communicate what you're doing, keep everyone up to date with your progress. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's a lot of variation to the day, and that's what really keeps things exciting. Are you excited to see that there's a lot of focus on getting young girls and kids just interested into computer sciences at such an early age around this time now? Yeah, I think that's definitely great. Um, I was actually really fortunate because my mom was actually a computer programmer and I had some uncles that uh, were engineers. So I was definitely exposed to that at an early age. But I think it's great um, to be able to have kids see you know, not even just science and engineering, but all the different kinds of fields that are out there, right? And to see that there, are, hey, there are all these different options you can do. Here's some, here's an example of what it's like. And so that really helps kids broaden their interest and learn a lot of, about things. Yeah, I think um, something that's great about the games is no matter what the topic is, you're always learning something. You're always using your brain, right? So you're trying to figure out how to solve a puzzle, you're reading something, or you're thinking about what you need to do next. So the other thing that's cool about the games, I think, is because you have such a wide variety of topics, a wide variety of characters, you got characters from all different backgrounds that do you know, all different kinds of jobs, and it just shows you you know, there's all these different possibilities of things you can do. And and have you seen the Hidden Figures film yet? Yes, actually, I uh, I just saw it last weekend. Uh, what what does the film mean to you in this aspect? Did it really inspire you, and, and did you really like seeing what it was like for these characters to go on their own journey? Yeah, definitely. So I was um, familiar with the story of the um, female computers, just a general level. Like, I knew they existed. I knew that they had contributed but it was really cool to see these these three women, their stories brought to life, right? They did some incredible things um, in really in the face of some very difficult circumstances. And it was really inspiring to see how much they persevere, persevered through these circumstances. Um, and they definitely were trailblazers for the people that came after them. It's, it's great to learn about these new stories. And, and people always say the, the famous quote, doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. So do you have any funny stories about people reacting when you tell them you are a rocket scientist? <laughs> well, yeah, there's a... Uh... Definitely a lot of people think it's uh, it's really awesome that I work for NASA, but uh, for some reason the first thing that comes to mind is uh, one time I was, I was getting a root canal and the uh, dental assistant that was prepping me, he found out I worked for NASA and you know there was some movie out at the time about space and he wanted to know how accurate it was. So I hadn't seen that particular movie, but... Uh, I just said, you know, in general, a lot of those movies, some pretty far-fetched things happen. And so he laughed and he told me he actually felt the same way about um, when he sees dental scenes on TV. Like, you know, <laughs> he's looking at it and he's like, you would never actually do that that way. So, yeah, I guess we kind of had a bonding moment about that. And really, I mean, 
you know best what you're trained to do, right? So I'd certainly be clueless when it comes to like being a lawyer or an accountant or something. <laughs> I'm going to have five locked clue questions for you. We just tested this out in a couple episodes beforehand with Kalina, one of the workers at Her Interactive, and I thought it would be fun to do it with you because you're also a Nancy Drew fan. So right. the first question is, what was your first Nancy Drew game? Uh, so the one I actually started playing first, I believe, was Message in a Haunted Mansion. And number two, what is your favorite Nancy Drew game? Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I would say probably uh, Treasure in a Royal Tower uh, and Danger on Deception Island definitely rank up there. Um, as far as some of the newer ones, uh, I really liked uh, the Deadly Device, and since I'm an electrical engineer, I... That was perfect. I was just about yeah, to ask you that. <laughs> that. So that, that was pretty cool, actually. I think uh, I was still in college at the time that came out, so I was like, oh yeah, I know what they're talking about. Cool. <laughs> um, and then uh, I like uh, Ghost of Thornton Hall, also. I like it. I like it. And number three, who are you going to call? Ned Nickerson, the Hardy Boys, or Bess and George? Hmm... Uh, I was actually always partial to talking to Bess and George. Number four, what place from one of Nancy's past cases would you like to visit and see for yourself? Oh, wow. Um, hmm. I guess, uh, it might be fun to go up to the San Juan Islands up there in Washington where Danger and Deception Island takes place. Um, and also I'd like to go to Italy someday as well. And our final clue question, what character besides Nancy and her friends do you think you would get along with if you got to meet them in person? Oh, boy. Uh, maybe uh, some of the characters in Deadly Device. Um, Ryan, maybe. And, uh, what's her name? Ellie, I think. And our final question for our interview, any words of advice for our Nancy Drew fans who are also interested in pursuing a career possibly for working for NASA or being a rocket scientist like you? So I guess I would just say learn as much as you can right now. Um, and if you've really got an interest in it, just research uh, what you need to do to be able to get there. Um, it's definitely a, a challenging career path. Um, so you'll encounter a lot of difficult stuff along the way, but don't give up. Um, it's definitely all worth it in the end. And thank you so much for coming on the show, Kristen. This has been a lot of fun. Definitely. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs>